Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Epcot for the International Flower and Garden Festival 2022. I'm so excited to go around World Showcase, look at some beautiful flowers and eat some delicious food and just have a wonderful Epcot kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. There are so many things to look forward to this year at the Flower and Garden Festival, and we're gonna try to cover as much as we can. I wanna at least try to eat one thing from each of the food booths, check out all the topiaries, and also all the activities that you get to do. And I'm excited, it's gonna be a beautiful day. First things first, we have to grab our festival passport, and then I think we're gonna head straight back to World Showcase so we can start getting in line for some of the food booths. Usually on opening day, there's long, long lines to get some of the food items. And like I said, we're gonna do our best and try to try a little sample of everything. I always try to formulate a plan on how I want to go around World Showcase, but then I never follow it. I kind of just wing it after that, but I do think of like certain places I do want to stop. Like I want to go try some of the arepas, and always I have to see the butterfly tent, so I think we're going to go to the butterfly tent first. Bambi's Butterfly House is one of my favorite things about Flower and Garden Festival. Every single year that they have the Butterfly House, I always end up getting a butterfly land on me. One time it landed on my nose, one time it landed on my shirt, and I feel like that's a sign of good luck, so I always start out there to give me good luck around World Showcase. Look at all the Bambi topiaries, and you can see some butterflies outside already, but right inside is the butterfly house, and that's where all the butterflies are just roaming around free. So I'm so excited to go in. <laughs> Look at I can see the shadows. We can see butterfly shadows. I like how they have these little beads here to keep the butterflies in. Oh, wow. Look at that. It is so pretty in here. <gasps> A butterfly literally just almost flew right on me right there. All you gotta do is hold your hand out still and they'll come and land on you, hopefully. Just be very, very quiet. I don't only attract bees, but I do attract butterflies as well. Look at all of them, though. Like, there's so many butterflies. There's three of them flying together right here. That is so pretty. It was there! Oh! <laughs> Okay, so one landed on me just for a second, and that's good enough for me. Now I got my good luck for the day. It's time to head on in. Our first stop of the day is gonna be here at Sunshine Griddle, brunch bites and beverages, and look at the long, long line. And it seems like they have a pretty interesting uh, menu here. They have the avocado toast, the shrimp and grits, the corned beef brisket hask, fried cinnamon roll bites, Fruit Loop Shake, I remember the Fruit Loop Shake from last year. And I don't know, maybe we'll do some cinnamon roll bites, a little brunch, you know? Normally, the Sunshine Griddle is uh, the donut box, and they usually serve donuts there, but they uh, kind of redid it for Flower and Garden Festival, and it's a bunch of uh, brunch bites, so I'm excited. Here is the fried cinnamon rolls, and look at that, is that bacon on top? Yep. That's bacon? Cream cheese frosting and bacon. Candied, candied bacon. bacon. Candied bacon fried cinnamon rolls. Oh wow, I'm excited. I like how they added a little bacon on there and it's dusty. It's very dusty. Look at how amazing that is. Oh, I love it a lot. It's like, honestly, it has like a, a churro feel to it, but oh yeah. And the icing on the inside, I believe as well. Oh yeah, right there, that's the stuff. Now that I found all of that like icing on the inside, I had to go back for a second bite because I feel like I missed it on the first one. So here we go. Oh yeah, big difference. Now we've made it into World Showcase. The birds are flying around, the flowers are in bloom, and the lines are forming at the Mexico booth. I feel like that was a nice little rhyme and I kind of am proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hi friends! <laughs> I want to show you guys some of the festival merchandise because they have the festival market booth right here. And I kind of like the spirit jersey. I think it's really, really nice. I like the colors. I like orange bird though. Uh, and I'm glad to see it's not a repeat of Festival of the Arts with the figment popcorn buckets. Everything seems a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> Here is the original Florida Orange Bird Spirit Jersey, and like I said, I like this a lot. This is really, really nifty, and uh, they also have Think Orange ball caps, some coffee mugs here, 
Oh, I like the coffee mug. Some uh, hats there. Original like shirts over here. They're all really, really nice. I love the color orange. Before we make it to any of the countries, I wanted to stop at the Impossible stand here. They have a lot of cool items. They have grilled baby vegetables, Impossible sausage and soup, uh, Impossible sausage and kale soup, a boneless Impossible Korean short rib, chocolate cake. I mean, this all sounds pretty amazing. Not too sure what I'm gonna get, but I do wanna try it. Luckily, there is no line for the Impossible stand, so we're going to be able to get our food very quickly. But that's probably going to be the last of that. Once we actually get into the World Showcase itself, the lines will probably be much longer. I went with the Impossible Korean short ribs, and look at this. I'm very excited to try something like this. It's going to be uh, something a little bit different. Normally, I don't try the Impossible items, but why not? Why not mix it up a little bit? Be another bone marrow. Oh boy, yeah, it's gonna either be another success or another bone marrow. Oh wow, it actually falls apart pretty easily. Grab a little veggies, grab a little rice, all in one bite. This is kind of interesting. I mean, <laughs> I'm excited. A lot of people say it's really, really good. So here we go, one bite, a little bit of everything on there. Wow. That is amazing. That's impossible. That's not real. Wow, I'm still kind of shocked by the uh, Korean short rib. It was amazing. It tasted just like the real thing. And that's something I will definitely get again. And we made our way over to China. And uh, it looks like this booth is super popular. Look at all the lines here. They actually have, I think, three switchbacks there. And it kind of looks like all the same things that they had before. I've had almost everything from here last year. I don't see anything different. So I think we'll move straight on over to Germany. But uh, uh, I'm hoping to make a big lap right around and then catch everything that we don't do on the way uh, back around. I've noticed a lot of the food items are the same exact items from last year on certain uh, boots. So I'm going to keep my eye out for any new items. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to keep moving around and make our way just around World Showcase. Before we make it to Germany, I wanted to stop at the refreshment outpost. It looks like they got the pineapple skewer and then also a tangerine cream ale, which is kind of fitting for Flower and Garden Festival because of like the orange bird. So it's kind of like a tangerine, like I'm, I'm thinking like an orange like beer. And since we've already had one like dessert, one entree, now it's time for a drink. Dessert, entree, drink. You know, that kind of nice good rotation. Once I got up there, I was kind of fixated on the tangerine cream ale, but I didn't even notice that they have a blueberry lemonade cider, and I don't like ciders that much, but I kind of thought blueberry lemonade sounded really refreshing, so I decided to get that as well. Look at them though, aren't they so pretty? This is the blueberry uh, lemonade hard cider, and then this is the tangerine cream ale. And I'm excited, this one tastes like oranges, obviously this one's blueberry lemonade. And I'm not gonna drink both of them, I'm actually gonna share some with my friends, but uh, they look so fancy, don't they? I love it. I think we're gonna try the tangerine cream ale. And like I said, I'm expecting a lot of like tangerine orange flavors in here, so we're gonna go. There's not a lot of foam on top though. They kind of both look like ciders. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's much too good, wow. I like that a lot. It deserves a second sip. And this right here is the blueberry uh, lemonade cider. And this is probably the more prettier one. I feel like this is something that could have been at Festival of the Arts with the blueberry beer. And uh, I kind of like it. Cheers to the fancy beers at the refreshment outpost. They are always coming through like some special stuff. I always come here if you want to look for a different type of beer around World Showcase. And uh, here we go. Oh, wow. That's good too. I mean, I'm not a big cider guy, but it doesn't taste like a cider. It really does just taste like lemonade with a hint of blueberry. It is really refreshing though. This is something you could probably walk around and drink with and just feel nice and refreshed around World Showcase. I might get another one of these eventually when I come back. Yeah, if I had to choose, I would do the tangerine ale, the cream ale. But the blueberry, like, this is like a refreshing drink. You know what I mean? But it's a, an expensive refreshing drink. I'd much rather get like a non-alcoholic beverage. Absolutely. But to drink a beer, I think it would be the tangerine cream ale. Got it. 
it's not too hoppy at all, the cream ale, and it does just taste like an orange creamsicle beer. So, like I said, this is the one I would want to drink for beer purposes, but the blueberry lemonade is more of a refreshing beverage, though. But cheers! Cheers to Flower Garden Festival! Kristen is taking over the uh, blueberry lemonade cider. No alcohol left behind with me. What a yeah. <laughs> Do you like it, though? I don't love it. Yeah. It's very, it's very tart, very sour. It's very I, I yeah, like sour beers. I think it's refreshing, like yeah. you know what I mean, walking around the hot sun. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Good one for a refreshing beverage. Yes. <laughs> Here is the Germany booth, and it looks like they have the potato pancakes with the house-made applesauce, and then the warm cheese strudel, along with a couple of beer flights. But let me tell you something. This is one of the longest lines of the festival, isn't it? Yeah, right. You're you're agreeing, right? Look at this. Holy moly i would probably I, I think there's two cashiers up there so i'd probably say about like 15 minutes right here maybe 20 minutes and that's not too bad but sometimes it could be like 30 45 minutes so it's it's, it's definitely a difficult uh booth to actually get stuff from the food in germany is pretty amazing the potato pancakes i've had them before but the topiaries are the best look at these look at how cool these are they have all seven dwarves, and then they also have Snow White. And look at this. And of course, Dopey is with Snow White. I feel like uh, Dopey is Snow White's favorite seven dwarf. Like, look at that. That is amazing. Best topiary is right here, I feel like. And I haven't even made it all the way around, but I love it. Now we've made it to the Italy booth, and a lot of people don't like to actually stop at this booth because it's very expensive, like super expensive. The orange uh, arancini is $14, ravioli is $13. As you can see, it's very high prices and probably low portions, but I kind of want to show off what they got here. I mean, I'm excited to try the ravioli because it's sweet sausage ravioli with the sweet corn and spring vegetables and a cream sauce, so I think we're gonna try both a little bit of uh, arancini and ravioli might as well but it's gonna be $27 I have to say normally I am one of those people that will skip over this booth But I'm, uh, I'm excited to give it a shot and let you guys know like is it kind of worth you know Like that high price take because it is definitely the most expensive food of the festival So as long as the quality is up there, I think it might be worth it, but we're gonna find out Here is the arancini. It's fried risotto balls with braised beef Grape tomato salad and also uh, balsamic and I think it looks really really good they give you four of them and then here is the ravioli and I think there's four raviolis you guys had the ravioli how many raviolis are in there there's four yeah three or four we don't know yet well I mean they're kind of camouflaged in there but we're gonna try them and I'm excited for the ravioli because it is a sweet sausage ravioli I don't know how I like the cream sauce though is it good Oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the arancini first here. And like I said, they give you four, so there, there's enough that you can share around, or if you you know pay for it, you might as well eat it all. But here we go, we're gonna dive right in here. Well, that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, holy moly. These are really, really good, and they're fresh and like kind of crispy, and they're not soggy at all. So I do like it. I don't taste must. I don't taste like a lot of the braised beef in there though. I just take the. I taste the risotto mainly, but very, very good. And now we're gonna try a little bit of the ravioli here. Look at that. Oh, I think I got four in there. I must have got lucky. But it kind of looks hollow, so you can see where the sausage is actually in there. It's right there, right where the fork is. A little ravioli. I like the way it's just kind of sitting on the fork there. I could cut it open. I should cut it open and see what it looks like on the inside. But like I said, I don't think there's I don't think there's a lot of like sweet sausage in there. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it all in one bite. Okay. Wow. Mmm. The ravioli all day. Ravioli is the best. Wow. 
I would choose the ravioli over this any day. The, this is really, really good. And the sauce isn't that bad either. You know, I don't like a lot of cream sauce, but it is so good. Also though, I did get the top one. So these ones down here might be a little bit more mushier because they've been sitting in the sauce, but that is phenomenal. <laughs> Even though I really, really loved the ravioli, I don't know if it's worth like the, the high price. I feel like you can get two items basically for one item at Italy. I mean, it is very good though, don't get me wrong. If anything, I feel like the ravioli was my favorite out of both of them. I feel like the, the uh, arancini could have used like some Sunday gravy or some marinara sauce. That would have been like a little nice uh, mix up with it. But uh, yeah, very good. Now it's time we make our way over to America. And also, I totally forgot that it is frushi season because of flower and garden. Hi, friend. So we're going to be able to get frushi once we get to Japan. But first, we got to stop into America for Magnolia Terrace. They always have some good food there. And we're definitely going to be getting something. I feel like we got a little off track with our rotation there. I was going like, you know, sweets and then like savory and then drink. But over at Magnolia Terrace, they might have a couple of different things that uh, I want to try. And also, I'm also trying to show you guys as much of the topiaries as I can. Because those are like some of the best things about the festival. They're so pretty and I think in America, they've got Pluto. Right here is the American booth. And like I said, you got Pluto over there. Oh, you also got Chip and Dale. And it's so pretty. And here is... Uh, the uh, booth itself and it, it looks like it's a little bit crowded but not too bad the lines are actually better than festival of the arts i can tell you that like right now so far we've been able to get in a lot of them without having to wait long at all here is a look at the menu at the magnolia terrace and they've got southern seafood boil chicken gumbo spicy chicken gumbo grilled oysters house-made boudin bites uh pecan praline and it all looks good and then also we get a beer flight our first beer flight of the day. So I think we're gonna try a little bit of the gumbo, a little bit of the boudin bites, and maybe a beer flight. I feel like that's a good combination. I really hope I was able to say boudin right. Well, I remember the last time I said boudin, 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 boudin. But I think I got it down path now. Look at them back there making up the oysters. I'm not gonna get the oysters though, but they do look really awesome. It's like a, it's like a technique. <laughs> it's, it's, art. it's an art war. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's the definitely. The last festival is Festival of the Arts, but this one's really where the art is. Yeah, this is the art right here. <laughs> I love it. Look at this skill right here. <laughs> oh, I'm carrying I'm carrying the, the uh, gumbalaya, the beer flight, and then also the balls here. So don't lose them. Feet don't fail me now. Feet don't fail me now. So I ended up getting the gumbo and the boudin bites and my friend Kristen got the oysters and then Promise got the seafood boil. So we got a little bit of everything. We got the whole booth. We got the whole booth. <laughs> the oysters, they have a nice like panko breadcrumb, like a toasted breadcrumb on them. The, oh. The, yeah, the it's still like really too. jammed in there. I can't really get it out. Nice and grilled. Mm. That's the way. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, it's good. It's good? <laughs> good. And you got the seafood boil? I know, more flavor. Look at this, and we can, you know how we do, Nate. Oh, little craw daddy, huh? Love our little craw daddy. <laughs> Happy festival. I love it. Oh. Crawfish vibe. Crawfish vibe. Hi, too. Hi, too. Hi, too. Hi, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here is the gumbo and the boudin balls. I got one without the sauce because I wasn't sure if I was going to like the sauce. And then, of course, we've got the beer flight. And I'm shocked because of how light it looks. It looks super light, and one of them's a double IPA. I kind of took the card away, so I don't know which one is which. I guess we're going to find out as we drink them. But uh, they all look the same. Like, they all look so light, but that could be dangerous. Because you would drink them fast. Regardless, I'm going to drink them fast. <laughs> I'm not going to drink the beer first because I do hear that the gumbo is super spicy. So we're going to need something to wash it down with afterwards, especially if it is spicy. Because, you know, I, I'm not a big spice eater. So uh, at least we have the beer as a backup. Mm, super fresh. Super Here fresh. is the gumbo. Look at this. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. And you can tell it definitely has a little spice to it. So we're going to grab a big bowl. Big, a big bite. Oh. 
I wish I had some jambalaya to go with the gumbo so I can have some gumbalaya. But uh, just the uh, gumbo today, so we're gonna we're gonna go in for it, Eric. Oh, that's good. That's better than French Quarter. Mm. That's a good portion too for six twenty-five, and it definitely has some spice. It took like five seconds for it to kick in, and now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a little spice there. I like it though. It is really, really good. And I got a little, a little pro tip that said I had to mix this with that. So we're gonna have to do that. But first, we have to try it. So I'm gonna try the boudin ball or the boudin bite uh, first uh, without the sauce, and then I'm gonna mix it with the gumbo a little bit. And uh, here we go. Oh, that's good. Wow. I know you want it. Both of these are a home run. I really love it. This is nice and crispy. And now we're gonna we're gonna add a little bit of the gumbo to the bites and make a little Bowden gumbo bite. Doesn't that sound good? All right, here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> he was right. That is the way. Yep. Out of everything that we've had so far today, this is my favorite. Like I know it's so funny because it's the America Pavilion, but I'm, and we still have some things we could get to, but this is so great. Like the combination, and I think it's just the way I like food. Like I love gumbo, I love jambalaya. You guys know what I like. And uh, this is just right up my alley. But I also think it's like not your normal American food. It's not true. Pizza tacos. It's like America New is a melting pot. It's New Orleans. All different <laughs> yeah. countries and flavors. And like this is what American food is supposed to be. It's yes. A good representation. Yes. Yep. And barbecue. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Now it's time to try the different beers, the beer flight. And like I said, I don't know which one is which. Uh, the first one on the list says it is a 81 Bay Brewing Company Orange Wheat Ale. So it's either going to be that or the double IPA. So I guess we'll find out once we sip it and drink it. Then I'll find out which one is which. And they're little tiny, little tiny cups here. So here we go. First one. Is it going to be the double IPA or is it going to be the orange wheat ale? <laughs> we'll find out. That's the IPA. <laughs> That's the IPA. So then this one over here must be the, the wheat, uh, orange wheat ale. And the IPA was really, really good. Like, I like that actually. It's very smooth, not too hoppy at all. Oh yeah, this is great. This orange wheat ale, that is phenomenal. Holy moly. I like that better than the uh, tangerine cream ale. And then this one must be the American Light Ale by Wicked Weed Brewing Company. And this looks so light. It looks almost like a cider, doesn't it? But we'll give it a go. Oh yeah, that's good too. All of these were home runs, but the orange wheat ale was the best. In my opinion. I mean, I'm not a big IPA drinker, but this one is this is light and refreshing Now you don't need to get the flight itself You can actually get full-size beers if you wanted to but I would get a full-size orange uh, Wheat ale over the like I said the uh, cream ale the tangerine cream ale. This was phenomenal Now it's time to move along and we're heading to Japan for some frushi I love the frushi and I'm excited that we get to try it today they have a lot of different things on the menu here. They have the frushi, they have the beef, the chicken, uh, but you know, of course, we're here for the frushi. Or actually, you know what? The pineapple Nigeri sake sounds pretty amazing as well, but I think I'm all about the frushi. I am pretty positive the most popular food item here at Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival has to be the frushi. I mean, the hype is real. People get super excited about it, and uh, of course, we got to do it. I mean, I do love it. It is really, really tasty, and uh, from someone who doesn't like sushi, it's kind of like an escape, or it's kind of like saying, yeah, I've eaten sushi before, but I have had sushi before, and this is, this is really good. Here it is, we get four little pieces and it's got pineapple, strawberries, whipped cream. I think this is little coconut in there and we're gonna grab a piece right here. And then of course you gotta get the whipped cream. You gotta get the whipped cream 
Oh, look at that. That's a perfect bite. There we go. It's time. It's Fushi time. <laughs> and we're going to try it. I'm so pumped. I've been waiting for basically the whole year to actually try this again. Mmm. Wow. So good. <laughs> It's so good, I think I'm going back for more. <laughs> Keeps me coming back for more. Baby, you're all that I need. <laughs> and I found it here in Frushi. <laughs> now that the Frushi business is taken care of, we decided to move along and we came up to where the Encanto booth was for Festival of the Arts. And I remember a lot of people being upset that they didn't have arepas on the menu. Well, I guess during Flower and Garden, they decided to just make a whole menu about arepas. They actually went so far to add all arepas. So they added three arepas to the menu to kind of overcompensate for the lack of arepas for Festival of the Arts. So they actually have an arepa with uh, queso. So they have a queso arepa. Then they have a shrimp and crust avocado arepa. And then arepa topped with chorizo. And I think I'm gonna go with the chorizo one. I got it right here. My friend picked it up for me. And she's getting the queso one. So I'm excited. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look like the original arepas that I would normally see or get. But uh, it's worth the try. Here is Promise's queso arepa. And she got two. I yeah. guess I guess I only get one with the uh, chorizo, yeah. but doesn't yours just look so plain? Well, it looks like a little personal pan pizza or something. Doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a little <laughs> tiny pizza. Or it looks like the Back to the Future pizza that they put in the machine <laughs> like to grow like the full one. Like better lunchable. Yeah, but mine was only $5. Oh, yours so was 5 So it is a yeah. little bit cheaper than, than yours. Yeah, this was $6. That means I should get more arepas yeah. though. <laughs> So I'm not too sure what to expect here and I don't even know how to eat it because it's kind of like I, I wish I could just like push it on top. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push it on top of the arepa and then I'm just gonna take a bite like a pizza. That looks good. More like chips and dip. All right, we're just gonna bite on into it here. Okay. This is good. Okay. Um, this is good. I mean, I feel like the arepas didn't live up to the hype that everyone probably thought they were going to be. Uh, but I do like the fact that the arepa itself isn't soggy. It's actually pretty firm. So you can just kind of like dip and then like kind of like bite into it. Kind of like a little uh, lunchable. Good. I actually might like the chorizo more than I like the arepa itself. Just the chorizo on itself. You want to try that? You want to try some? That's what good. I was thinking. Like it's really, really good. Like I could just eat a bunch of that. <laughs> now that we had some of the chorizo arepa, I think it's time to get a little something sweet. And since France is right next door, I think we're going to get the creme brulee beignet. A creme brulee beignet for $5.75. I've had this before, and it is really, really good. And they also have the uh, Grand Mimosa here. The Grand Mimosa cocktail, which is really good as well. They have tons of stuff. And of course, the rosé frozen slush. Such a classic drink here for Flower and Garden. Here is the creme brulee beignet. And doesn't that look so good? It looks like a donut, doesn't it? And it's so funny because we just had like some gumbo and they had like the seafood boil and now we're having some beignets. And it's still technically Mardi Gras. Yesterday was Fat Tuesday and uh, we're going all in here. Luckily with this beignet, we don't end up getting powdered sugar all over ourselves, but we might get some of the creme brulee on us. So we're gonna just bite on in here. Oh wow. This is good. Yeah. Oh no, there's filling? Oh, oh, alert. I gotta I gotta take a deeper bite. That's where it's at. Oh yeah. I like it. Look at this right here. I love it. The filling is where it's at though and it is such a delicious little treat. I, I wish we can get it hot though because it is a little cold. I don't think they do hot ones like hot beignets because you need that but this is this is probably a much more pleasurable like sweet treat so far that I've had at the festival. I think I'm actually going to finish this up here because it is so good. Much too good. 
<laughs> now we have made it to the Northern Bloom, which is over in Canada. And it looks like they've got some scallops, some beef tenderloin tips with mushroom bolognese sauce, whipped potatoes and garden vegetables, and then a griddle maple pound cake. The griddle maple pound cake sounds interesting. They also have a beer flight that pretty much has a gluten-free blonde ale and then a brewing blueberry fruit beer and an apricot maple syrup beer. I think I might do the beer flight and that's probably, I think that's it. Here is the beer flight and this is the gluten-free beer. Look fancy. Ooh boy. So I opted in to get the maple pound cake and then also the beer flight because it kind of looked interesting. I mean, I like anything with maple in it. And also I'm a little intrigued to try the Glutenberg. I think that sounds, I, I mean, it's kind of cool. Here is everything that I got. And the beer flight just looks light. Almost all the beer flights kind of seem light today. Uh, they have a blueberry fruit beer in the center there. And then here is the cake itself. Look at it, it's got popcorn on it and there's the, the pound cake in the back. This is gonna probably be delicious, I feel like. It's funny because we decided to come back over where the DVC stand is. And this is where we had our bone marrow incident last time for Festival of the Arts. But I say it like bone marrow incident. It's just so funny because it was just a big group of people which giant bones in their hands eating marrow and I don't know I just thought it was funny <laughs> paging the Mr. Marrow like I, it was a, it was a good time let's try the cake first and I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything in one bite you know what I mean because I want to get some I want to try it all at once get a little popcorn in there it's really awesome because the popcorn is the maple popcorn that they serve over at the uh, popcorn stand in Canada so here we go That's good. The peaches are a really good combination. The cake is nice and soft. And you add a little of the popcorn on there. Now the popcorn's not like, you know, soft popcorn. It's more like a caramel popcorn because that's how the maple one is. But this is so good. I like it. Now we're gonna try the Glutenberg. And Allie at Allie Wood Studio, she's gluten free. She got excited for the beer. Is yeah, it good? It's gluten free, you would never know. Never know, well I'm gonna find Cheers. out. Cheers. I can yeah. tell, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all right. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's good, right? Yeah, you it's can't tell that's gluten-free. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really good beer. That's not bad at all. It's good. <laughs> that was really impressive. And now we're going to try the uh, apricot maple syrup one. Look at this. I'm going to try to pull it out. This actually seems like it's going to be a little bit interesting, too. A little bit of uh, apricot, a little bit of maple. Oh. I don't like that. No, oh, no, no, David. No, no, David. <laughs> no, David. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of fruit beers, so I feel like this one isn't going to be my favorite flight of the festival. I still think America's probably my favorite fe uh, <laughs> flight, but we're going to try the, the blueberry fruit beer here. A little fruit beer. Well, that's not bad. It's not sour either. This actually is really good. This, I like this a lot better than the uh, apricot maple one. Still, I like the American beer flight better. Now it's time we made our way to the Honey Bistro. And I'm sorry, I feel like we're moving along pretty quickly today. I'm shocked because I, I wasn't expecting the crowds to be this light. I thought it was going to be super busy, but it's actually really amazing how small the, the queues are. And they have a lot of great things here, of course. They have the cornbread, then they have the lavender honey mustard marinated chicken flatbread. I think that's a new item. Along with the wildflower honey mascarpone cheesecake. And a lot of good stuff. This is one of the places where you can buy uh, the Spike the Bee souvenir sipper and it's not a big craze like uh, Figment, uh, the uh, Figment popcorn bucket, but I remember this one last year and a lot of people liked it. Take a look at the honey mustard chicken flatbread. This looks really, really good and it's so funny because, you know, you wouldn't expect something like this to be at a honey bee stand. You know what I mean? So it's really interesting and I'm excited to see it. There's ricotta on there, I believe. So it, it might be pretty good. We got a little mini flatbread review. You can see the crust on the bottom there. The undercarriage looks pretty good. And uh, I'm gonna go all in. I don't like honey mustard that much, so I'm gonna see how I like this. And uh, I don't know, I'm a little nervous, but we're going for it.
Oh, that's good. This crust, though, is probably my favorite thing out of everything. It is so good. I, 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 I would probably get this again, but my go-to is going to be the cornbread. It is so phenomenal. I can't believe we made our way all the way around World Showcase. And uh, there's still a lot of things that we didn't get to try. So there are going to be parts two and three to Flower and Garden Festival. I want to make my way back out to Spaceship Earth area because the past two festivals, they've been doing a special show. For Festival of the Arts, they had the Muppets on Spaceship Earth. So I'm interested to see if they're going to do anything special for Flower and Garden. And we're going to wait out there until the first performance to find out. On our way back out to Spaceship Earth, though, I did want to stop at the Epcot Farmer's Feast. This is one of the more popular booths, and when I was coming in, it was very busy, so I skipped over it. But they have a charred grilled bison ribeye. That looks so amazing, and it's with creamy leek fondue, roasted cauliflower, and a port wine goat cheese butter. And that, I'm so excited for it. I think I'm going to try it. They also have, like, a hibiscus lemonade cocktail, and... Uh, yeah, I'm happy we came back out for this. This I am excited for. I love bison and this looks like something that I would probably order in a restaurant. And uh, I think it's gonna be the last item of the day, our last food item. So we're definitely gonna come back and try some more, but I think I tried like 17 items. So that's, 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 that's pretty impressive. Look at that. They're cooking up the bison ribeye right there on the grill. I like those char marks right there. You guys are doing good. You're getting the diamonds on there, huh? That's the way. Good job. Thank you. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. And here it is. I have a feeling this is going to be my favorite thing of the festival. I mean, oh, my Lord. Look at this. I can't get over it. This is unbelievable. We're just going to go right on it. We're going to dive in. We got uh, a lot of good other things that go along with it. Some fried cauliflower here. And, oh, my. I, it's, it looks amazing, doesn't it? Look at that juice just dripping off of it. Holy moly. That's it, folks. We're calling it. My favorite thing in the menu. My favorite thing in the festival right here. I have to say, though, if you want, like, more of a rarer cooked meat, you have to ask... Like you have to say, hey, I want it a little bit rarer, and they will accommodate it. And this is phenomenal, though. Phenomenal. We're gonna soak up all of that juice and that goat cheese butter and just get a nice, good piece of meat. This is by far, like I said, the favorite of the festival for me, Eric. Just, it's perfect. It's perfect. That's what took so long. Now we're going to make our way up to Spaceship Earth so we can see what the special uh, projection show is going to be. I'm so excited. They've been doing such a great time, like a great thing with these. And I feel like it's like the best thing to come out of the 50th. So uh, I'm ready to see the Flower and Garden uh, rendition. We have to say happy birthday to Jackie. Super enthused. Happy birthday. Today's the day. Today's, Today's the her day. birthday. So be on the lookout for her video. She was going around enjoying her birthday, doing all the festivities, and we had fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A great day. And what a great way to close the night. We love this festival. And it's amazing. It's so good. It's like a favorite, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But look at this. Now look at it. Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> Okay, so Colors of the Wind was good. It was just a little bit soft and I couldn't hear anything, but I like the Muppets a lot better. And I think to cap off the night, I think we're gonna go for a night ride on Test Track. Looks like the wait time is 50 minutes and there's approximately six of us, so we're gonna have a car of our own. Well, it definitely wasn't 60 minutes. I would say probably 50. I mean, it definitely wasn't 50 minutes. I would say probably 30 minutes. And that's like a little bit more better. But I'm excited. We're going to have our own car. The subject is around you. Oh. Did you guys know this goes up if you raise your hands up?
And with that, I think we are done here today. What an epic opening day for Flower and Garden Festival. I know it was probably a lot, but I was trying to cover as much as I can to show you guys. And it was great that I get to be with a big group of people and we get to actually show off the food and try it all together. So that way we can accomplish and show more. And uh, I had a lot of fun. I think my number one item is still going to be the bison ribeye. That was phenomenal. And then uh, probably for like you know beverages I really loved the beer flight in America I thought that was really really good and uh, overall I had a lot of fun so I hope you enjoyed the video I enjoyed making it we'll see you next time bye